Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. So, this is the recording for the first lecture of semester 2. Before that, I would like to say congratulations and well done for surviving semester 1. So, are you guys ready? Semester 2, here we go. Believe me, the reward is not so great without the struggle. And I believe everyone and even me, I've been mentioned a lot of times that this second semester will be full of challenge, challenges because it involves programming. And I really love and I can't wait. Okay? The whole process, the whole class will be going to be fun and we're going to do a lot more, more practical. There's less on um, theory and it will be more on practical. Okay? So remember this quote? The reward is not so great without the struggle. So are you guys excited? Maybe? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, never mind. Okay. As usual, in every start of the class, I will share with you all the rules of class. Okay? Rules of my class. First thing first, you need to give me your 110% of full commitment. When you give that commitment, you will receive an eternity love and attention from me, okay? Simple. You get what you give, okay? And I am like that. If you show me your effort, I will show you my effort to help you guys, all right? So the second rule is honesty goes a long way. I don't mind if you have any problems or uh, difficulties in attending my class. Just be honest, okay? No need to uh, hide from me or no need to lie to me, okay? So that's why I say honesty goes a long way. Number three, there is no such thing as stupid question. Ask whatever you want, anytime, anywhere. You can through a DM message through Telegram or you can just ask me face to face. And last but not least, communicate, communicate and communicate. I really don't like being ignored. Ataupun orang kata kena uh, silent treatment. Okay, so I don't want that. And whatever things I've shared or whatever things if I forget to share, you need to communicate, you need to always remind me. Okay, because I'm also a human. Human makes mistakes. Okay, so let's help each other. Okay, so as usual, this assessment or call it PB, markah PB, Okay, it divided into uh, two, which is final exams, 40%. And then your continuing assessment will be 60%. UPS will be 20% and you will have three. You will be sitting for three times UPS, UPS 1, UPS 2, UPS 3. And then lab test as usual, lab test 1 and lab test 2. But all of these lab tests, both of these lab tests will be about Java programming. Okay. And then last but not least, it's written assignment, 10%. What are you going to write about this assignment? It's mainly about relate, relate to Java itself. Don't worry, okay? And this is all same as previous semester one, okay? So, enough of this introduction. Let's not waste any more time and go into our first subtopic, which is 1.1. Look at your screen right now. What did you see? There's a lot of weird syntax and then there's word much like left carousel control span class and then hujung sana to you will see there's a lot of numbers from 94 until 116. What you all see in front of you is normally what the programmers will see. So I would like to say Share to your journey as programmers begins, okay? Officially, right now, at this moment, look at the time, you are now considered as programmers. Why? Because you will learn everything about programmers and you will do programming, you also do coding, okay? So, again, I would like to mention, share to your journey as programmers begin. Let's look on the overview syllabus of SC025. Okay. Overall, there will be four topics. Uh, jangan terpedaya ya, walaupun nampak macam sikit topiknya. Tapi dalam setiap topik ni ada 
banyak lagi subtopik. Okay. And the one yang I've shown to you here is the uh, yang paling utamalah, the more important one. So topic one will be on introduction to programming and I've mentioned in the group before, I would like to cover it in one week. Simple. Topic two, approach in problem solving. Topic three, design a solution. And topic four is the Java language. So topic four will be a long. We, there are... Uh, ada punya duration belajar dia sangat panjang ya yes? sebab kita akan ada cover banyak subtopik dalam topik 4 sampai part point and out in which at the end of the semester you are able to write java program so that is the aim of us okay the aim untuk kita semua the aim, saya punya aim untuk an, untuk awak semua dan awak punya aim kepada diri awak sendiri awak boleh cakap at the end of the semester, you are able to write Java programs. You are able to program, you are able to do programming in Java language. And that skills is really, really important and really orang kata, awak macam ibarat anak emas lah di luar sana eh. Sebab awak ada skills dalam programming. Okay, so in this particular video, we will cover on 1.1. But in general, in topic one, introduction to programming, you will learn on three subtopics. So the first subtopic is programming language. We will look on definitions and then uh, low level and high level. Okay, and the subtopic 1.2, language paradigm, other three digits. There are three types of paradigm, which is procedural, object-oriented, and logic. And then 1.3, language translator, we cover on three types of translator, which is compiler, interpreter, and assembler. So, for topic 1, introduction to programming, the learning outcome is at the end of the lesson, you'll be able to first define programming language, programming paradigm, and language trans translator. So, at the end of the day, you are able to know what are their definitions. Okay. And then the second point is you are able to differentiate between three different types of programming language paradigms. And then last learning outcome is you are able to differentiate between three types of language translator, which is compiler, interpreter, and assembler. On subtopic 1.1, which is programming language, okay, we're going to look on three types of programming language. Okay. Before that, before we want to learn about programming language, we need to know, of course, the basic one. What is program? What is programmer? Easy. Okay, simple sangat. Program, programmers, programming. Dia macam main dengan, uh, what you call that? Grammars, right? So, program. What is program? Program is a series of instructions. It's a list of instructions where you, where the programmers write to give instructions to the computers. Or, we can say it is a list of instructions for computers to execute. Okay, dah lah examples ni you boleh nampak, okay? Ada kita tulis ni apa ni? Uh, hello world and then ada see out hello world. And then ada keluar satu window baru nombor dia terminal. Okay. The one that I bulat kat sini, the one I circle here is what we call program. Okay. Dan siapa yang tulis program ni? Who, who is the one who write this program? Obviously, we call it programmers. Okay. That is you lah. Ha, all of us. So the one who write program is we call it programmers and a program is what is a list of instructions that we give to computers to execute okay and these instructions we need to write using a language what language a language that only computers can understand and that is what we call programming language ha huh, simple guy okay? okay. so refer to your lecture notes because I will not put all the notes in front of you. You just need to listen to my explanation while referring to the lecture notes. Okay? Ingat lagi sekali. Programmers adalah orang yang tulis program. Program adalah satu uh, list of arahan yang ditulis oleh programmers untuk beri arahan kepada computers. Simple as that. Okay? Dan nak menulis, uh, satu, nak menulis uh, program ni, to write the program, we need to have one programming. We need to have, we need to use a language. 
language macam mana? Language yang hanya komputer sahaja faham. Dan yang language inilah kita panggil programming language. Okay. So, sebelum masuk programming language, kita tengok pula what is programming. Okay. So, tadi program. Programmers. And now, programming. What is programming? Programming atau dia punya formal definition dia is actually the process of breaking down a large complex task into smaller subtasks. Ah, maksudnya, kita duk, duk, tulis-tulis apa benda dalam instruction dalam program tu, itulah kita panggil programming. Program, programmer, programming. Ini semua BI ya. Anak tu kau jangan nak confuse sangat eh. Okay. Jadi, sampai bila? Until when we need to break down? Until when? Uh, kita, adakah kita akan keep on programming walaupun ada api di keliling kita ni uh, rum, rumah tengah terbakar pun kita still continue programming macam gambar ni? Ha. So, the process of breaking down will be continued until the task is simple enough to be performed by the computer. Uh, jangan jadi macam ada lelaki ni ya. Eh. Teruskan programming walaupun dia nampak depan mata dia dah ada kebakaran. Tapi nak kata yang dekat sini, the ideology is that programming ni kita buat sampai bila? Sampailah kita jumpa solution dia. Ha. Sampailah kita dapat apa yang kita nak. Okay. So, why we need programming? Why? Why? Kenapa kita perlu buat programming ni? Okay. The aim of doing programming is to actually to solve a problem. Okay. So, to in when you do programming, okay, you automatic become a programmer. So, as a programmer, you need to have this one critical thinking di mana you can always fikir macam mana nak solvekan problem tu. Ah, macam dalam contoh ni, programmer tu akan fikir, okay, ni untuk siapa? Siapa yang akan guna? Involving who? Or what is this program is for? So, from now on, until lah semester kita berakhir, I want you to shift your mindset to change the style, the way you're thinking into critical thinking. Maksudnya, apa-apa yang you fikir, you kena fikir macam mana nak selesaikan. How? How? Why? Why? Uh, itu kita panggil critical thinking. Okay? So, tadi saya dah mention pasal programming language kan. So, the formal definition of programming language is a set of words, abbreviations and symbols that enables a programmer to give instructions to a computer or mobile device. Ha, ni memang you kena faham kan? Lepas you dah faham, you akan senang nak hafal. So, basically, programming language ni is a set of words, abbreviations and symbols that is used by programmers to give instructions to a computer. That's all. Okay. Ingat tadi, program. So, sekarang ni you dah ada berapa banyak definition yang you dah kena tahu kat sini. So, you need to know program tu apa. Program uh, Programmers tu ap, uh, apa maksud dia. Programming tu apa. Kemudian, programming language. Uh, make a short notes of it. Okay. So, programming language is divided into two types. We have low level and then high level. As the note says, the only language understood by a computer is machine language. Jadi, macam mana yang dua tu? Assembly dengan high level. Ha. Computer hanya faham machine. Tapi, kita mahu ada assembly dengan high level. Jadi, kita nak buat apa? Kan? Okay. So, apa maksud low level dengan high level ni? Low level bermaksud dia orang kata the first and the second generations lah. Maksudnya dia adalah language yang komputer, masih komputer boleh faham. Well, kalau high level pula, komputer tak faham langsung language ni. Hanya manusia saja faham. Itu maksud dia. Okay, high level dengan low level. Low level ni ada dua pula jenis. Ada dua kategori. Machine language dengan assembly language. So, machine language is fully computers. Assembly language pula separuh komputer, separuh manusia. Disebabkan ada juga intervention bahasa manusia dalam assembly, maka dia pun perlu kena translate kepada machine. 
high level obviously lah memang kena translate pergi machine. Bila saya sebut pakai translate translate ni nak translate pakai apa? What we need to do? We will use translators and that translators will be covered in your subtopic 1.3. Okay. Look, let's look on machine language. Machine language, I was Look at the lecture note. It is instructions that is made of a series of digits of a zeros and one, right? So you can see here zero zero one zero 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 one zero. So this all of these combinations of zeros and one will give instructions to computer. Okay. Itu machine. What about assembly? Sebab tu saya kata tadi assembly adalah separuh manusia, separuh komputer because as you can as you can see in this examples here, okay, in the assembly code, okay, ada ORG 100, LDA A, ADD B. LDA, ADD ni semuanya adalah English-like abbreviations in which we call it mnemonics. Okay, it's a symbols yang they actually, bila you baca ADD, oh, add, oh, it means addition. So, maksudnya kita Sebagai human tu, kita boleh faham sikit-sikit. Okay? Kalau komputer, dia boleh faham sikit-sikit sebab ada nombor. Ada 100, ada 80, 83 and then 0. Ha, tu maksudnya kenapa kita panggil assembly language ni separuh manusia, separuh komputer. Okay? Ha, so, tengok this examples where I put assembly dengan machine tu next to each other. Okay? Compare yang you boleh tengok sendiri kan. Machine language kita memang langsung tak boleh baca. Ada penuh dengan ones and zeros. So we, we we humans didn't understand at all. Well assembly, we are able to understand a little bit. Okay, half of it we can understand. Like for example here, MUL. It means multiply. So multiply the number 801 with 2, uh, 2 times or whatever it is. Okay. 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 Uh. Komputer pun faham separuh. Tapi assembly language tu masih perlu kena translate fully pergi ke machine language. Barulah komputer tu akan boleh execute. Okay. So enough about assembly and machine. Kita tengok high level. Ha. So dalam nota ada silap sikit. Okay. Tukar change the 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 part where I think I wrote um, assembly code or something. Change it with Java. Okay, so this example here shows you the Java punya instructions, writing in a Java language. Well, in the next the next column here is the list of instructions, the examples list of instructions that have been written using C++. So, kalau you tengok, okay, compare antara dua, antara ni kan, ada tak nombor-nombor lagi? Ha, tak ada kan? Semuanya pakai orang kata um, alphabet kan ha, so kat sini int integer a b c ha, ni semua ni jangan risau you will learn later throughout the whole semester okay but for now i want you to get the rough idea that high level language ni sebab tu dia kita panggil high level sebab dia terlalu tinggi untuk komputer nak faham hanya manusia sahaja faham okay ha, macam ni semua kita boleh faham kan c in c in b pakai alphabet so, in summary, tiga programming language ni, bila you letak sebelah-sebelah, okay, machine language, assembly language, high-level language, you can see, orang kata the main difference lah. Sangat terang, terang lagi bersuluh kan, tak perlu nak cakap. Ha, machine language penuh dengan, uh, is made of a series of binary digits. Assembly language use uh, English-like abbreviations. High-level language using English-like words, okay. Ha to, pre to uh, present instructions to the computers. Okay? Easy. Semua so, point ni ada and then baca sahaja lecture note. Okay? Compare dan dengar. If tak faham, boleh sahaja PM saya ataupun jumpa saya face to face. It's, tak ada masalah. Okay?